That's My Line. Brought to you by Geritol, the high-potency vitamin iron-rich tonic in liquid or tablets to help you feel stronger. And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. Lovely. I, uh, I have a very special happiness tonight because it is my pleasure to introduce to you one of the most talented, most beloved, most durable men in our industry who is beginning his second 30th year, Mr. Arthur Godfrey. And I should like to present a distinguished reporter, a lovely lady who is the daughter of the Dean of Distinguished Reporters here mm -hmm. in New York, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And many happy returns of this night and this week. And now, another wonderful guy that we all love, Bennett Sir. Welcome, Arthur. Thank Speaking you. of durable things, uh, this <laughs> ends the 14th year of What's My Line. That's an eternity in television. And we owe it all to the wonderful support that every, all of you have given us, and we're very grateful. Uh, I'm reminded of a story of a great movie star who was interviewed by a reporter last month, and he said, uh, it's 10 years since I interviewed you last. What have you been doing in those 10 years? And the star said, well, for one thing, I'm a year older. <laughs> and uh, our panel moderator in all these 14 years seems to us just to have aged about a year. Still a youthful fellow, still vigorous and able to walk with his own two legs, John Charles Daly. <laughs> Say this is really an occasion to get a bit sentimental, to be with uh, my fine and dear friends in the panel for 14 years. Next Sunday we start our 15th, and I can't think of anything, Arthur, that would complete my night as perfectly as having you on the panel, because Arthur was one of that small, very small group who sort of held me up in my early years in radio and later on in television has always been a, a watchdog over me. And, given me, I guess, all of the moral support any man could expect from a dear friend at the critical moments in his career, and I'm grateful, sir. Nice to have you with us. We've got some interesting occupations for all of you, and uh, I think we'll have a lively half hour, one you'll enjoy, and we'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program, and we'll meet our first challenger after this. And now to meet our first challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Alice Gilbert, is that right? And, uh, is, it, uh, is it Miss or Mrs. Gilbert? Mrs. Mrs. Gilbert, and where are you from? Birmingham, Michigan. Birmingham, Michigan. <laughs> well, you have a lot of friends in the house. Mrs. Gilbert, may I present the panel? Now, will you join me here, and we'll let the audience at home and the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. Panel, we can tell you that Mrs. Gilbert is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with um, Arlene Prentz. Uh, Miss Gilbert, is there anything 
to do uh, in your service with the entertainment industry in any way? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Godfrey. Is there anything to do with children in your service? Sometimes. Uh, is your service of an educational nature? Yes. In a way, Arthur, I would say that some aspects of it would be considered to have an educational uh, character. Children sometimes. Huh? Then, it, then you do, the, this service is generally for adults then? Yes. Yes. For both sexes? Yes. Do you come in contact with the people? Physical contact, you mean, Arthur? Beg pardon? Physical contact? Yes. No. No. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. <laughs> Chitty. <laughs> I knew he would be. Uh, Mrs. Gilbert, do they ever come to you in groups for your services? <laughs> Sometimes. But they could get individual, whatever it is? Attention? Yes, they yes. can get individual. <laughs> Uh, do you work indoors? Yes. Do you move about in your work? You mean more than one would be expected to uh, normally in just getting up from desk, for instance, to walk to the door, that sort of thing you wouldn't call moving about? I'm afraid I meant a little more than that, John. Thank you. No, that would be no, then. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Gilbert, uh, I've been in Birmingham. I've spoken there. It's a wonderful suburb of Detroit, isn't it? I have a feeling that you work for a non-profit making organization, is that correct? Yes. Have you got anything to do with the courts and the meeting out of justice? Yes. Uh, when you do your work, are you ever attired in some garb other than the lovely dress you're wearing this evening? Well, I hope so. Yes. I didn't, I, mean, I, I, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. I meant no. in some kind of a uniform that might be recognized readily. No. That's four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Miss Gilbert, do you have to have a formal education for what you do? No. No. Well, with, with Mrs. Gilbert's permission, I would say we would normally presume that anyone functioning in this area has had a degree of... of um, special training, which would involve some educational aspect. Well, uh, Miss Gilbert, do you have anything to do with law? Yes. You do. Uh, do you have anything to do with uh, uh, the meeting out of justice? Yes. Are you yourself a kind of lawyer? Mm. Yes. yes. I, do you uh, sit at the bench? Are you a judge? Yes. Well, Bennett is the one who thought of it. <laughs> but actually, uh, uh, Mrs. Gilbert is Justice of the Peace in Bloomfield Township, and the thing, Bennett, I was going to wear you a robe. Never Mr. wear Gilbert? robes. No, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Gilbert doesn't have to wear a robe, and you oh. don't have to be a lawyer to be a, a judge in this case, although. I Mrs. Gil know. Gilbert explained yes. they've just changed the Constitution in Michigan, and it, the uh, legislature can now, and I guess you hope they will make it a requirement that anybody who's appointed a judge or uh -huh. is elected to a judgeship does have a, a legal degree. But she doesn't have to have it. That's why she said no, and I had to come in and, and change the answer. Yeah, there was a great thing about Birmingham, Mrs. Gilbert. I, I think about 90% of the people there are in the automobile business in one way or another, aren't they? That's correct. Well, you mustn't have many cases and to handle because... That'll be all, Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> not any cases. I must say, Mrs. Gilbert has asked that uh, her uh, victory over the panel, which we still consider it's a victory, uh, be contributed to the Northwestern University Law School Alumni Fund. And we'll be glad to do that. We'll turn all the cards over. And thank you very much thank for being our guest on What's My Life. Will you enter and sign in, please? <laughs> Sissy? Sissy Brown with an E, is that right? Yes, sir. Sissy.
Smith or Mrs. Brown? Mrs. Brown. Mrs. Brown, yes, and where are you from, ma'am? Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee, where they have the made of cotton every year. A wonderful cotton week yes. that you have. I've been down there for it. Had a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to have you with us. Mrs. Brown, may I present the panel? Hello. Can you join me here, please? And we'll let the audience at home and the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. tell you that Mrs. Brown is salaried, deals in a product, and we'll begin the general questioning uh, with Bennett Sir. Mrs. Brown, is this a product that uh, comes, uh, can come from your home city of Memphis? Yes, it can. Uh, is it, but uh, may I presume that it is not just a specialty of Memphis that this could come from other places too, is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it a product, Mrs. Brown, that can be used by both ladies and gentlemen? Yes. And children? Yes. Uh, is it a product that might be found in the home? Yes. Is it a consumable product, either eaten or taken in liquid form? <laughs> no. No. I just went down tonight to go with Francis. Is there, uh, <clears throat> is this product anything uh, that is made of cloth? No. Two down and eight to go, Arthur Godfrey. It's a manufactured product, isn't yes, it? Sir. Yes, sir. Are you in the business of manufacturing it? Well, part of the whole complex, Arthur, of the making and distribution, she's in the chain of, of merchandising. She's in chain. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it... Uh, is, is this product something you, you say that's used in the home? Is, does it beautify no, it the home? No, it, 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 it could be found in the home, and we just agreed it could be found in the home. Would it beautify the home? Mm, no, <laughs> no, I don't think we could say beautified the home. That would not be its purpose and intent. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it more utilitarian, Mrs. Brown? Yes. Uh, would it be used out of doors ever? Yes. Would it make a noise when it was being used? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Surf. Uh, Mrs. Brown, is this made of some kind? Is there any metal in this product? Yes, sir. Is there any use of electricity or gasoline necessary to make this product work? Yes. Uh, well, now, wait a minute. Mrs. Brown is being very kind to you. <laughs> to make the product itself work, Well, we would agree this, Bennett, that one of the elements which you have proposed is necessary if you are going to fruitfully make use of the product. <laughs> would this product be found in the component parts of some kind of vehicle? No. No. That's five down and five to go, Miss Francis. It is found mostly out of doors, and it's made of metal, and is it larger than that old bread box? You'd have trouble with a bread box with this product, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is larger. Mm -hmm. um, is it anything you could get into or sit on? No. You can't get in it? <laughs> no. Can you get into or sit on? Now let's maybe say no. <laughs> Six down and four to go, Mr. Gutter. Anything if you want to. world. You got me, huh? Fast. Dorothy? Uh, is it hard rather than squashy? Yes. <laughs> is it shiny? I think if you take good care of them, or it, it would be shiny if you yes. took good care of it. Of course, if you didn't take good uh, care of them. Could I live all my life without having one of these things? Yes. <laughs> we wouldn't like you to do that, but you could. Uh, is it used more in the country than in the city? Yeah. <laughs> I would guess, and I would ask Mrs. Brown to correct me if she feels I'm wrong, I would guess that in the use of the product, we would agree that uh, you would tend to be out of the center of any urban area, wouldn't in you say? In what she's saying, I think she means country. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, this would be more likely to be found in suburbia than in a little New York apartment. <laughs> yes, I would think. <laughs> Is it smaller than a phone booth? 
Smaller than, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but bigger than a bread box. Now that gives it away, doesn't it? Uh, and it is not a chair, obviously. Yes, it is not. Is it impossible to fold? Fold what? This product. The yes. product? Yes, yes it's it impossible. Mm -hmm. uh, Matter of fact, it's an impossible can, product. Hmm? Do you think that if I saw this, I would recognize what it was? Yes. yes. It isn't something like a disc harrow or... No, you'll recognize it. It is not a farm implement. Is that no. correct? Yeah, that's right. Yes. It's not a farm implement. <laughs> Would you ever push this along the ground? No. I've got to give you one more minute. Seven down, three to go. Would this ever be used to beautify the grounds around the place? <laughs> Eight down and two to go. Arlene, you want to take a shot at is it? Is it, uh, is it used to dispose of, uh, do you dispose of anything in it? Well, I would say sometimes you dispose of something in it, yeah, but... Uh, is it a casket? No, it's... No, good law, no. It's... Mrs. Brown sells water skis. Pan American. Pan American skis. Pan American skis incorporated in Memphis, but Mrs. Brown travels all over the country selling water skis. And, well, we uh, ski all the time in apartments here in New York. Right. <laughs> in the bathtub. In the big bathtubs that are not in the apartments. That's these, right. Actually, they, I was trying to remember. Are aluminum Doris. skis or wood? Sir? Aluminum skis or wood? No, sir. They're made of mahogany. They're wood. There, it has to be a very superior type of hard wood, doesn't it, yes, for, to have a really good pair of skis, or even, I guess, any skis, because they take quite a beating if, when you get revved up in them, you know? Thanks very much. Yes. Very nice Thank to have you, you as a guest on What's My Life. We'll make a nice mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now, the special feature of our program, uh, for which, as you all know, the panel is blindfolded. And uh, are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, John. All righty. Will our mystery challenger enter and sign in, please? Panel, a different form of questioning now. One question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, are you in the movies? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> Sir? Uh, are, you in, uh, are you in a picture that is at present playing in the Broadway area or is about to open there? Yes. This Would you uh, be considered a leading man? No. Then one down to nine to go, Mr. Godfrey. Are you a comedian? Well, I'd like to think so. Miss Kilgallen? Uh, are you a uh, stand-up comedian rather than a character man? Sometimes. Mr. Sir? Would the picture that you're appearing in be either Dr. Strangelove or Seven Days in May? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. God, seven days, days in May? I don't think it has any comics. Uh, is that your principal for it, comedy? Yes. Um, oh, I guess Mr. Godfrey? <laughs> Are you a young man? <laughs> Comparatively young. I would say yes. We'd have to agree you was, Arthur. Miss Kilgallen? Uh, do you ever sing or dance? No. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Are you at present in a play in the metropolitan area? No, I'm not. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Have you made a dent in television? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Arthur? Did he say no? We yes. Didn't hear that. He said yes. a little bit, yes. but he's done more than a little bit. He did make a dent in television. Mm -hmm. Do you date back from the old radio days? Uh... No, not really. But here, 
I would say a qualified no there, if our guest will permit, because uh, he, he was very active in the radio field and, and earned a, a fine reputation there. Miss Kilgallen? Uh, are you British? No, no. <laughs> That's five dotted five to go, Mr. Sir. Are you well known for playing re rural or hillbilly roles of any kind? <laughs> no. His name is not Beverly, I guess. That makes it six out and four to go, Miss Francis. Now, when you were in, in television, did you have your own show? Yes. Arthur? Are you a big man physically? Fairly big. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. Fairly what, what big. What was the answer, Fairly John? big. Fairly, Fairly big. big. Do you smoke a cigar? No. That makes it seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Are you at present in a television series that is now being played regularly on the networks? No, I'm not. That's eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. Are you fairly new to the uh, uh, television industry? No. Now, what do you mean by fairly new? Well, I mean in the last 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a yes on that, Mr. Godfrey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, he's in a movie now. now, now and a he's comedy, this, what's playing? A comedy. And uh, obviously he's the star. You would be there. <laughs> and he's a pretty big fella. And that certainly isn't his usual voice. Hmm. Heavenly days, I guess. Couldn't we have one go at his usual voice? Just one little no. go. Well, this, yes. this is pretty much my voice. What? This is pretty much my voice. He's speaking in natural voice, then. Any ideas? That isn't Jonathan Winters, is it? Yeah! special it. fun is he was with Arthur on Friday night as a part of Arthur's 30th anniversary. I thought okay. I knew every voice he yeah, does, that's but that one, one I didn't. That's a brand new one, he's right. And the movie you were looking for is it's a mad, 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 mad. mad world in which, uh, and by golly, we all hope it's true. He's uh, been he's nominated, to be nominated and, and will win himself an Oscar for his work in that. Well, um... John, uh, just to be nominated, as you understand, it's uh, one of ten uh, uh, in the uh, uh, supporting actors, best supporting actors. It's one of ten, and that in itself is a great, great thrill. Uh, naturally, I'd just, uh, I'd like to narrow that down to five and be in the five, but uh, I'll settle right now for uh, uh, one of the ten. It's a great, great thrill. It really I mean, is. You should be very proud of it. And, and, uh, it's wonderful. Properly. We picked out in that particular picture because everybody under the sun's in it. Well, yeah, I've got a big cast in that. To stand out in that cast. Everybody but adult. Granny Frickett. Why is <laughs> Granny Frickett in that picture? And by the way, Granny was too old for it. <laughs> the Jonathan Winters show, the television, actually it's a special television special. will be on next month. So we can on see another again, network. Then, on another network. Uh, yeah. Sometime they told me to say this uh, and make it very clear. Uh, not to give the exact date, so it's late, late in February. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining us. Well, I think that you uh, did fairly well tonight, panel. Congratulations on doing fairly well, and we'll all be back after this word from our ultimate sponsor. And so we finish our 14th year again, Arthur. It's a joy to have you here with your 30th week, 30th year celebration with ours. And thanks for coming, and good night, Eileen Francis. Good night, John. It was wonderful to have you with us, Arthur. Good night. Good night, and good night, Dorothy. It's been a great joy. Thank you. It has been to us, Arthur. Good night. Good night, Bennett. And it's really been fun for all of us, John. That includes you. Good yeah. night. Bennett and I got so sentimental tonight, we agreed that we were going to be nice to each other for a long time. <laughs> Painless for both of us, and thanks to all of you for being with us on What's My Line.
Watch My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Todd. This is Johnny Olson speaking.